Welcome to Living Hope Podcast with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Join me for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is the centurion's faith. Last week we watched in awe as the people of Capernaum brought their sick family members or friends to Jesus to be healed or set free from evil spirits. To our amazement, everyone who asked for help received help. There were no cases that were too difficult for Jesus to heal or to set free. Matthew wrote in chapter 8 and verse 16, That evening they brought to him many who were oppressed by demons. He cast out the spirit with a word and healed all who were sick. What shocked us the most is what Matthew went on to say, that what Jesus did on that day fulfilled the words of prophet Isaiah. In verse 17, Matthew said this was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Hosea. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. What a huge revelation. We no longer need to ask the question, is there healing in the cross? Because the Bible says that there is. Ask God to give you faith to believe that there is healing in the cross and the courage to release healing to people you meet every day. From this moment on, Jesus healed people every day, everywhere. A great multitude, says Luke chapter 6, from all Judea and Jerusalem and the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured, and all the crowd sought to touch him, for power came out of him, and he healed them all. It is worth noting that Jesus seldom asked people about their faith or religion before he healed them. He did not ask them if they had gone to the temple in Jerusalem for the required festivals, or if they were going to attend the synagogue service on the Sabbath. He healed Gentiles and Jews alike. You might ask, how do I know Jesus healed Gentiles? Matthew specifically mentions the region that was called the Decapolis. These were the ten most important Roman cities where most of the Gentiles lived. Matthew said, in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 25, His fame spread throughout all Syria. They brought him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, and those oppressed by demons, those having seizures and paralytics, and he healed them. Great crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis, and from Jerusalem and Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. Healing was always a part of the gospel Jesus preached. Jesus healed, and then he preached, or he preached, and then he healed. We learn from Jesus that the gospel is not complete without healing. This brings us to today's story, the healing of a Gentile servant who belonged to a Roman centurion. This story can be found in Matthew 8 and in Luke chapter 7. Matthew focuses on the faith of the centurion, while Luke focuses on the process that led to the servant being healed. There are valuable lessons about healing to be gained from Luke's account. Luke chapter 7, we discover that the healing of the centurion's servant takes place in the city of Capernaum. The centurion and his cohort were stationed there. Luke tells us a centurion had a servant who was sick at the point of death who was highly valued by him. Matthew adds the detail that he was lying paralyzed at home and suffering terribly. While we don't know the cause of the servant's health crisis, we know that he was paralyzed, suffering terribly, and close to death. There might be someone right at this moment listening to me who is suffering from these same things. We want to pray for you today that you will be set free. The centurion was facing circumstances beyond his control. That did not happen very often. The centurion had access to all the resources of Rome, but Rome could not offer healing like Jesus could. You can be sure that the centurion had already made an offering to the Roman God of healing for his servant. He clearly understood that Jesus had more power than the Roman gods. Luke tells us, when the centurion heard about Jesus, 
he sent to him elders of the Jews, asking him to come and to heal his servant. Luke chapter 7, verse 3. When the elders came to Jesus, they pleaded with him earnestly, saying, He is worthy to have you do this for him, for he loves our nation, and he is the one who built our synagogue. This is how religious people talk. They plead and they try to claim worthiness. That is not how healing works. Notice the difference between the attitude of the elders and the attitude of the centurion. The elders said he's worthy. The centurion said he was not worthy. The elders said he was deserving. The centurion said he was not deserving. The elders praised him for building a house of worship. The centurion felt unworthy to have Jesus enter his house. Jesus was touched by the attitude of the centurion, not the religious talk of the elders. So he went with them, Luke chapter 7 and verse 6, and when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying, Lord, do not trouble yourself. I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore I did not presume to come to you, but say the word, and let my servant be healed. Healing comes when someone has the boldness to say the word. What word? Be healed, disease go, eyes open, ears be opened. But that was not all the centurion said. In verse 8 he said, I too am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant I say, do this, and he does it. Here is what the centurion meant by that. My authority in Capernaum is based upon my submission to Caesar in Rome. Caesar sent me here to exercise the same authority that governs Rome. When I speak, my soldiers don't hear my voice, they hear Caesar's voice. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him. Turning to the crowd that followed him, he said, I tell you, not in Israel have I found such faith. This is what Jesus is looking for in his followers. He wants followers to act like the centurion by believing healing flows through my hands. This is what he wants you to believe. My authority on earth is based upon my submission to God in heaven. Father sent me here to exercise the same authority that governs heaven. When I speak to disease and demons, they don't hear my voice, they hear God's voice. That's what Luke wants us to understand. When those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the servant well. I just want to say to you, say the word. Say the word. Say the word over distance. Say the word over phone. Say the word by texting people will be healed. Just before I began recording this program today, I made contact with one of our pastors in Cape Verde. I asked, how are you? And he said, I have a fever. Over the phone, I spoke a word to him. Texting, I spoke a word. Be healed. Fever, go. Disease that's causing that fever, go. He texted me right back saying, Pastor, I'm already beginning to feel well. So we want to keep talking with you about the life Jesus modeled for us. We'll continue doing that next week. But before we leave you, let's take a few moments to pray together over these great truths that we have learned today. First of all, we want to invite you to trust Jesus. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior, would you invite him to be your Savior right now? Say, Jesus, I know that you died for me on the cross. And right now I receive you as my Savior. I confess my sin that you took it for me and from me. You died not only for me, you died as me. And I received what you did for me today. Then we release a great faith, the faith of the centurion. Maybe you're at that point of death. Maybe you're suffering terribly. I just speak right now to you on your deathbed. You shall live and not die. I command the spirit of death to leave you and for the Holy Spirit to invade you with life. Jesus said, I've come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. I speak over you the abundant life of Heavenly Father. Father, just dropped in my spirit that somebody listening to this message is contemplating ending their life because their pain has been so high. I plead with you right now, in Jesus' name, choose life. Just say with me, I choose life, Pastor. 
feel life entering in you. Somebody's listening who is suffering terribly. You have unbearable pain, like the man in the story. You're paralyzed and you're in pain. I speak to your paralysis and I say, get up and walk. If it's your legs that are paralyzed, if it's your arms that are paralyzed, I command your arms to move. Let function, feel heat coming upon your body, feel function returning to your body. That pain which is debilitating you, it's causing extreme headaches, it's causing extreme muscle pain. I command that pain to stop right now in Jesus' name. I command this pain to leave your body, for disease to go and for peace to come into your body. Oh, thank you, Lord. I feel the Spirit washing over people right now and for pain going in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. We pray for those who are listening now. You're a leader. You're a pastor. You're a church member. You don't even know Jesus. It doesn't matter whether you're a follower of Jesus or not a follower of Jesus. This healing moment and these words are for you. Just say, Jesus, heal me. Jesus, heal me. We want to encourage you to learn to release healing without being present. You can release healing over the phone. You can release healing by texting. You can release healing by messaging, by WhatsApp, whatever means you use. Reach out to somebody and speak healing words over people. I speak to backs right now. Back pain, go in the name of Jesus. I speak to organ failures, organs that are failing function. Right now, come back to life. Liver, function properly. Kidneys, function properly. Gallbladder, function properly. Intestines, function properly. Lungs, function properly. Call disease out of these things that I have mentioned. And uh, whatever you're suffering, whether it's a personal heartache, whether it's emotional heartache, whether it's in your family, whether it's at work or in your circumstances, or whether it's even in your church family, we command the suffering to come to an end for you to see what Father has for you. We release a blessing on you today. If you receive Jesus as your Savior, or were healed while listening to this message, write to me, and we'll send you more information to help you grow as a follower of Jesus. To hear more episodes of this podcast, or uplifting messages and inspiring stories, please visit my YouTube channel at Dr. Peter McLuhan. Join us next week for another episode of Living Hope Podcasts.